Welcome, good afternoon, ladies, and I hope some gentlemen. Welcome to Power, the Female Tech Entrepreneurs Forum, um, subtitled Preparing for Greece's Cloud-Based Future. Um, this is a two-day forum organized by the U.S. Embassy in Athens and Women on Top under the auspices of the American Hellenic Chamber of Commerce with the participation of American women tech entrepreneurs and founders. I am Stella Kastagli, together with Pinelopi Thodorakaku, who will be hosting um, today's uh, event and tomorrow. Um, I have with me uh, Ambassador Jeffrey Payat, Ambassador, uh, U.S. Ambassador in Greece, and Miledis Tumbu, uh, who is uh, I'm going to announce them separately later. Uh, she's the senior regional director uh, in Microsoft and chair in uh, Women in Business uh, Committee of the American Hellenic Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they are going to offer their welcome remarks, but before they do so, let me uh, say a few things, very few things uh, about this forum. So the Power Initiative leverages diplomatic resources and the U.S. private sector to help women entrepreneurs and business owners across uh, um, uh, the world access the necessary skills and professional networks through embassy-led projects and economic policy dialogues. Our goal for this initiative is to contribute to an increase in the number of women entrepreneurs in Greece who are more readily able to access global and U.S. venture capital markets and increase in the number of U.S. entrepreneurs who are aware of the value proposition of the Greek tech sector, including women-owned businesses, as well as an increase in the invest investment deals and business connections between Greek and U.S. women working in the tech sector. In order to accomplish this within these two days, we will bring together uh, Greek women working in various aspects of the technology industry, together with American tech experts, to explore challenges they both face while expanding their technology businesses and accessing the necessary capital to do so. We aim to help Greek women focus on the tools they need to leverage cloud-based applications and strengthen the transatlantic network of women in technology. Uh, I think I'm sure you're going to see many more things uh, develop over the next two days. For now, I would like to welcome, to welcome uh, Ambassador Payat uh, to say a few words as uh, his opening remarks. Ambassador, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you so much, Stella. It's great to see you. Great to see Milady. Let me say also huge thanks to all of our partners at Women on Top and at MCHAM for putting this together. Uh, you did a great job, Stella, in your opening of describing what the Power Initiative is all about. But I would also emphasize the fantastic synergy between what you have been doing, what AmCham has been doing in terms of trying to advance our shared agenda of women's economic and entrepreneurial empowerment, but also the transformation that's underway in Greece right now. Uh, you know, when President when President Biden spoke to Prime Minister Mitsotakis a couple of months ago, one of his messages was to underline the U.S. commitment to partner with Greece as we all work together to recover from the pandemic and begin the process of sustainable economic recovery. And I think if there's one silver lining from this very difficult year and a half that we've all lived through, it's the fantastic growth that we've seen in the Greek digital economy. Um, we've seen a leading role by American companies, Microsoft, Cisco, Pfizer, um, Applied Materials, many others um, who have doubled down on their investments and their commitments here in Greece, recognizing the fantastic human capital, um, but also acknowledging the significant progress that Prime Minister Mitsotakis's government has made, even during this pandemic period, on issues like digital governance, distance education, um, deploying technology to help Greek democracy work better and smarter. Um, and it's something that I know American business has taken and American investors have taken notice of. And you see it also in the continued growth of this Greek entrepreneurial sector, which is something that I've been working on really from my very first days here in, in, in Greece five years ago but where we're now really entering, I think, the takeoff phase. And I am committed, the U.S. Embassy and the U.S. government are committed to ensuring that the women entrepreneurship story is an important part of this takeoff phase. Um, I was up in Thessaloniki and in Patras about two weeks ago and had the opportunity to meet and, and visit with several technology companies during that time, 
including Pfizer at their impressive new campus in Thessaloniki, and also Advent Technologies in Patras and Applied Mit and um, uh, Soft Automotive, which was recently acquired. Um, and I was really encouraged at both Applied Mit, at both um, Advent and at um, Pfizer to see the number of women in senior leadership roles as both um, technologists and also senior managers as these two American companies are scaling up their investment in the Greek tech sector. So this power initiative and the forum over the next two days is about reinforcing those networks, about sharing best practices. And I, I really want to thank all of the American women tech entrepreneurs and experts who are joining us over the next two days to be part of this and to share their experiences, um, but also reinforcing networks here in Greece. And I think one of the things that I've found the embassy is able to do well is to create a space either physically or digitally as we're doing in this case um, for Greek entrepreneurs, for Greek women technology folks uh, to get together, to share experiences, um, to recognize each other's talents um, and to identify a policy agenda because it's clear that this is an area that where we can't just sit on our, our, our laurels where invention continues every day. And I'm committed to seeing that the technology space remains one where the United States is Greece's leading partner and where American companies um, continue to play a forward leaning role in helping to bring best, best practices, um, innovative structures and technologies, and the capital uh, that's part of growing our, our technology relationship. Um, so this the, the goal of this initiative, as I see it, is to help increase the number of women tech entrepreneurs in Greece, including those who have access to US venture capital and, and US markets, and second, to strengthen those connections. Um, and I, I see those connections every time I visit an American technology company in Greece. Uh, and again, I, I was just with Advent in, in Patras. You find a Greek American story, which goes back to somebody's educational experience or a visiting professorship, but now it's begun to acquire a momentum of its own. And, and that's very exciting and, and very encouraging to me. Um, we're gonna keep working in this area. Um, from the lowest level up to the highest. Um, my colleague, Cindy Harvey, will be in Yanina in just a couple of days for another round of our Code Girls program, uh, which is aimed at encouraging young Greek women to become interested in areas of science and technology and, and mathematics. Um, we're gonna continue working on women's political empowerment with our partners at Women Act. Uh, we're working on women in tourism with Mihoho and of course, Women on Top is going to remain a key partner for us. So we're going to keep focusing on these areas. I'm excited about the fact that we're going back to the Thessaloniki International Fair in September uh, to launch our tech camp in Thessaloniki in real life um, with our partners, partners from Social Innovation, with a particular focus this year on women startuppers. So I want to close by just, first of all, um, thanking our partners at, at MCHAM and Women on Top um, underlining how proud I am of the work that the American Embassy has done in this area and saying how eager I am to see the results of your conversations over the next two days, but also where you all continue to grow the Greek economy in the months and years ahead. So thank you very much, and I hope you have a terrific discussion. Thank you, Ambassador. You touched my heart uh, talking about communities and networks, and I think you touched both our hearts uh, talking about policy agenda. Um, Milady, I think uh, you have to say a lot about this. Um, so we have with us Milady Stumbu, who's, uh, as I said, the Senior Regional Director at Microsoft and Chair at Women in Business Committee in the American Hellenic Chamber of Commerce, uh, who is also going to offer her welcome remarks. Milady, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Stella. Thank you very much to Ambassador Payet and the U.S. Embassy and Women on Top for the opportunity to discuss how to empower women tech entrepreneurs in Greece. Um, I am very passionate about this topic. I'm a woman in tech myself. I have studied engineering many years ago and I have been working for 25 years now in the tech industry. 
Um, almost one year ago, I was um, giving a TED talk discussing diversity and inclusion in the tech sector and why this is important. And I, and I shared this headline from Washington Post because it struck me. It struck me because it, it appeared, it, um, it depicted Margaret Hamilton, uh, the woman who led Apollo 11 mission um, and charted Apollo 11 mission to the moon. And, and I, was, I was very impressed because women were at the forefront of the tech industry on the early days. There are many more examples of that time, like um, Grace Hopper, for example, who was a U.S. Navy admiral. She invented the first compiler. And today we have a lot of celebrations, coding celebrations every year to celebrate uh, women in computing. What happened in the meantime is that we don't have enough women uh, in the tech industry. In the European Union, a European Commission reports that 18% of the specialists working in the tech sector are women. In Greece, the number is much smaller. And when we talk about the tech startup industry, 67% of the European level are founded by all male teams. So there's more to be done to have women owning businesses particularly in the tech sector in Europe. When, we, when it goes to funding, the gender bias is even stronger. Out of the 100 euros invested in tech startups, 91 euros go to, to startups with only male founders. And startups with women-only founders get less than 2 euros in 100 euros funding. So there's definitely a gender gap. There's no official data for Greece, but the Marathon VC had done an analysis of the past decade of the Greek startup ecosystem. 16% of the startups in Greece had one female founder, at least, and only 3% were founding, founded by women only. Over the past decade, more than 6 billion of euros were invested in Greek startups. But women, um, startups with only one, at least one women co-founder have received 6% of this funding. If we talk about leadership roles, women CTOs were only present in 4% of the Greek startup ecosystem. Why this is important? It is important, of course, for societal reasons. It is important for ethical reasons. It is important because we, know we want fairness and we want access to opportunity. And particularly in the digital space, when in the next years in European uh, Union only, we expect hundreds of thousands of jobs to be created around the digital ecosystem, it is important that women have equal access to opportunity as men. But it's also important from another perspective. The business case around entrepreneurship and the participation of women in the leadership roles is also very positive. I have put here a Boston Consulting Group um, study outcome that shows that companies who have above average diversity in their teams, they outperform their peers on the innovation revenue. Diversity is important for innovation. Diversity matters. In Greece, we are recovering from two crises. The long-standing financial crisis that uh, kept us one, uh, one decade, you know, but also the pandemic crisis. And it's important as we build up the, our recovery plan to get into the new normal, that we do this on equal terms, that we put gender equality and e equity into the center of the recovery plan for Greece. I wanted here to list a few opportunities that I see very specific for Greece, and I, I do want us to keep in mind also for the women entrepreneurs. First of all, in the last year, we saw a decade of digital transformation across all the sectors. Ambassador talked about digitization, about the government digitization, the, the private sector digitization, no matter how small or big, companies, organizations, government institutions have really transformed the way they worked. And this is a compelling event that we need to really catch upon because right now a lot of industries are disrupted due to the digital everything approach. Tourism, it was mentioned before. Entertainment, supply chain are all transformed through digitalization. Then we saw the emergence of remote work as an imperative on how we work. So there is more opportunity with that culture shift that you can start a business from anywhere you are. You don't need to be in Athens. You don't need to be in the center of things. You can stay on your home 
a town or a little village or an island, and you can start a business from there, and you can serve global customers through the digital technologies from there. We saw also companies putting purpose first in what they do. We saw companies even changing or shifting their production to, to, to take care of the customer or citizen needs to produce, for example, face masks or hand sanitizers when people had this in mind. And purpose and you know, contribution also to societal good is something that women are more sensitive about and they care a lot. And we see a lot of women engaged in social enterprises. So this is also a shift that we see. Ambassador talked about the big investments that co tech companies are doing in Greece. Uh, Microsoft announced the data center region. They also did an acquisition in the midst of, um, of uh, the crisis, uh, the healthcare crisis. Uh, Soft Automotive, uh, a Greek startup, was acquired by Microsoft. We saw the investments of Pfizer and Cisco. We saw InstaShop being acquired by Delivery Hero. Greece is becoming a popular investment destination and the Greek ecosystem is really now becoming more visible at a global scale. We also saw the announcement of Greece 2.0, which has digitization in the center of the recovery for Greece. And the funds from the recovery and resilience facility is something that would also impact the whole economy, putting the digital aspect in the center of recovery. Final, but not least, I have to say, we saw the emergence of, Greek, of women leaders uh, during this crisis. And while we, the, the crisis, as, as per Commission data, European Commission data has a female, let's say, um, um, lens, we saw and we celebrated the election of the first woman president of the Hellenic Republic, the first woman vice president in the US. We celebrated so many women leaders in science, in politics, in business. And I think the emergence of more women leaders is something that puts a lot of inspiration in what the tech ecosystem can also do. In my discussion with tech entrepreneurs, they talk that they need more access to information, more access to knowledge. And it's not only the tech knowledge, the digital skills knowledge that they're asking for, but also you know, how to learn and build and, uh, and um, lead a business. Access to funding that we discussed, but also networking opportunities and inspiration from role models. We are all aligned into that the networking and the community building is very important. And we at the Women in Business Committee at American Hellenic uh, Chamber of Commerce, we have this at the core center of our activities. We want to empower women to lead in the business sphere, and we want to increase the influence of women in the, in the digital economy as well. So here, I, I am very um, confident that these two days are really um, an opportunity to, to address all these five areas for the women entrepreneurs that are present with us today. With that in mind, I, I will leave you with one quote from a very important woman that is not so well known in Greece, but I, I, I found it very inspiring that uh, the US government, the uh, chief technology officer is a woman, Megan Smith. And she said that, you know, women just have to go for it. If they find, if they find something they're passionate about and they bring their best talent, they can be unstoppable. So just go for it. I am very confident about these two days. I am very happy that we have the opportunity to address opportunity for women Greek entrepreneurs. And I wish you all the best for the next hours and days. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Miledi. And uh, I also like the fact that we are going to address all five areas uh, you mentioned uh, that women entrepreneurs need, all entrepreneurs need, but uh, maybe uh, women have to gain even more. Uh, from those so networking access to finance uh, and all uh, the others um, the other empowerment tools we are going to um, approach these through our workshops our keynote uh, speeches our uh, panels and our mentoring sessions so stay tuned i will leave you to the very capable hands of Penelope Thodorakaku, who is going to moderate the next panel uh, on the challenges and the opportunities that uh, greek uh, startup uh, entrepreneurs uh, face at uh, this time um, 
of, uh, of their career uh, path. Uh, so thank you very much for being here with us. I'll see you later on our second panel.